Hi everyone, welcome to another class in this series on Yoga for Resilience. Uh, today is an asana day uh, and in our last lesson, which was a, a mindfulness lesson, we looked about how busy our minds were. And so in this, we're going to look at a bit of stillness. So if we think about yoga, especially in, in the West, there's a lot of vinyasa flow, which is great. A lot of power flow, again, great. People love to do power flow. And uh, it's, it's a good form of exercise. It's a good form of yoga. But one of the things is that actually our lives are super stressful, super busy enough. And then we come into the studio and we do some power flow where we put ourselves under even more stress. Now we can define that as good stress or you stress. And it can be, uh, but it's also important to do the other side and, and to slow ourselves down and to counter all of that stress and all of that uh, fast paced moving stuff that we're running into in everyday life. Because if we want to be more resilient, then we need to give ourselves time to recover. We need to give ourselves to rest so that we can go again, so that we have those energy reserves rebuilt. So like it's fine going into power flow and activating some sympathetic nervous system with some hard, really hard to hold poses. But we also really want to activate that parasympathetic nervous system, that rest and digest system, so that our body has time to heal, has time to rest and has time to go again. So in this, we're going to take some uh, really nice, easy poses. And we're going to start with square pose. So this is a seated pose. Um, pretty similar to, to how I'm sat now, um, but we're going to stack our legs. So you might, um, you can just do it sat on the floor. If you find that it's, it's quite hard for you to, to, to hold this shape, then you might want to sit on something like, like maybe a cushion. Or if you do have the yoga props, I'm actually sat on a yoga block right now. Um, but you can, you don't need that like a blanket, a cushion anything that helps tips you forward. If you have good flexibility around the hips, you won't need that. You can just sit on your mat. And we're gonna take, we're just gonna take uh, our one leg out and we're gonna get it so that our shin is parallel to the edge of the mat. And then we're gonna take our other leg and we're gonna try and stack it on top. So we've got our foot on top of our knee and then on the other side, our knee on top of our foot. And you can play around with exactly where. Um, now this position may or may not work for you here. I've got a bit of a gap. So for example, I could take a pillow and I could stuff it under there and that will help support it. So I don't have this knee kind of dangling about. Um, you can also play around with, with how you're seated. It might even be easier to come off the block for some people. And if you just can't get it on there at all, you can also lay that in front in a more of a traditional cross-legged pose, but see if you can get it up there. I'm gonna take a pillow. I'm gonna stuff that under there. And therefore, uh, my bottom leg is resting on the floor, this leg resting on the pillow, uh, probably getting a stretch on, on the outside of your legs. So hopefully you're, you're somewhere here and then from here, if you want, you can stay here or if it feels comfortable, you can also bend forward slightly. Now that will probably increase the stretch on the outside of your legs. So, so do that gently. And if it feels comfortable, you can find a nice tall spine, but also don't be afraid to, to round the spine a little bit and drop the gaze and Allow yourself to just sink into the pose. And from here, maybe bring in some of those mindfulness skills, maybe focusing on the breath. Try and keep try and keep your hips square so it's very easy to start leaning over to one side. Try and keep them square, but if you do find the stretch gets too intense, then do stop, do readjust. It's not a it's not a waste of time because you'll know what works for you next time we use this pose.
You're looking to make yourself nice and relaxed here. So again, if you are feeling that tension, then, then make the pose easier. Take, take the foot down here, wherever, wherever feels good for you. Prop up under your bottom if you need to. We're not here to, to put our bodies under stress. We're here to get a nice, gentle, relaxing stretch. All right. Gently unfold yourself from here. Use your hand to pick up that leg. Don't feel you need to do any kind of clever yoga unfolding. And now I want you to take uh, take your other leg. So for that, this is my right leg. If you did the other leg first, it might be the other way. But we're just going to do this pose on both sides. Just so we can equal it out again. I'm going to stuff the cushion in there. And you might find as you switch sides, um, you need a bit of a different adjustment. Maybe uh, uh, your hips are different flexibility on each side. Totally normal. That's fine. So you might find that you need more of a cushion, less of a cushion uh, to put the foot in a different position than you did the other side. But again, we're trying to stack, trying to stack the foot, the ankle over the knee and then the opposite on this side. And again, try and square up those hips. Square up your hips so you're not leaning over to one side. And then once you've found a comfortable position, either stay here or gently bend forward. Definitely feeling a bit tighter on this side, so I'm going to wiggle my way back up slightly. And find that position where I can bring some stillness, bring some relaxation into this practice. And gently uncurl yourself from here, bring yourself back up. Move that top leg off nice and gently. And we're going to come down into Sphinx pose from here. I'm going to move the block and we're going to lie down on our bellies, bring our forehands down to the mat. So we've got a 90 degree bend in our elbows here. The rest of our body's lying flat. It's a really good, uh, really good pose for anyone who spends all their day in an office. Maybe sat in front of a computer, a really nice back stretch. If you can't be down on your belly, then uh, you can always bring yourself up into um, the cow pose. Um, or you can, um, so you could also do camel pose, which is way up here and gently bending back. Quite hard to hold that for a, a while though, so maybe recommend being down here um, or come down 
into Sphinx pose if you can. Gaze doesn't need to go anywhere, like you can look up, but again, we're trying to find some stillness, trying to find some relaxation here. So we don't really want to be doing anything that's causing us stress. If you're finding this quite hard on the knees or the ankles, you could also stick a blanket under them just to give them a little bit of padding. As we continue to hold this pose, maybe you find yourself melting down into the mat as your body gently softens into the pose. Every time you exhale, can you soften a little bit more? We're going to bring ourselves out of this pose by just gently rolling over. So we're going to come to sit down here. And we're going to bring our heels together. So we're into, into butterfly pose or, or cobbler's pose here. So we're just going to allow soles of the feet together. And we're going to allow the knees to fall out. And then we're going to take a reclined butterfly. So gently lowering ourselves down here onto our backs. Now, how might we want to make this more comfortable? Well, we can alter where our feet are so we can bring them further up or move them further away from our bodies. Um, we can also prop underneath them. So as your knees fall open, you might want to put a pillow, a block, something like that under to prop them up. And then you also might want to take a, a pillow or a blanket or something and put it under your head to give your head a bit of support or, or maybe the lower back if you're finding that the back is arching. Might take a little bit of time to figure out where you go. I think I'm going to shove a blanket under this knee just so those knees are feeling supported they're not just hanging out there and then you can bring your hands down by your side you can bring them to your belly wherever feels comfortable but unless your knees are on the floor really good to to put some props under them so you can completely relax into the pose again bringing that stillness 
not adding more stress by how long can I can I keep my knees suspended in the air? So trying to find a place where you can just relax into the pose. You melt the legs down any further, but also the, the upper body, are you carrying tension in the shoulders, in the neck? Can you release that tension as you exhale? We're going to bring ourselves out of this pose, so lifting the uh, knees is a good place to start. Use your hands to bring you up to a seated position. And then again, we're going to roll over and we're going to come down into child's pose. So taking the knees nice and wide, bringing the feet together, sending our hands down out in front of us. Bring the forehead down to the mat. And again, what adjustments might we want to make here? Well, you might want to put a blanket under your knees or maybe one between your heels and your bottom. If those aren't meeting, then it can be really good to prop up there. Uh, you also might want to put something on your head. If your, your head isn't coming all the way down, you might want to put a blanket there. So you might shove shove the pillow in the back i'm actually quite happy with my forehead on the mat but i want to make sure we demonstrate all the adjustments because i do want you to find somewhere comfortable so maybe bring a pillow or a block down here and then maybe even take that blanket and stick that under your knees as well so the knees have got a bit of padding And again, just finding that stillness. Another good one, if you're bent over a computer, bent over a desk all day, it can be a real release for the shoulders.
again can use your exhales to melt any further down into the pose, releasing any tension that we find in our bodies. We'll bring ourselves out of child pose by first walking the walking our arms in a bit up, using those to push ourselves up. Let's take any props out that we've got lying around. And again we're gonna flip back the other way and we're gonna come down to lie on our backs again. And we're gonna take a reclined twist here. So we're going to come down, lying on our backs again. Maybe you want a blanket under the head to make it a bit more comfortable. And we're going to take our legs into the air so that oh, we've got 90 degree bends in our hips and our knees. And then we're going to, just going to let them flop over to the right side. So again here, you might find it really difficult to keep your shoulders on the ground in which case you can come over to your side a little bit maybe putting a blanket or a pillow behind your back to support that but if you can try and keep those shoulders on the ground and you can also if your knees aren't together you can also stick a blanket between your knees if that makes it more comfortable You should find a gentle twist in the lower back. I'm going to take the pose on the other side so you can leave any props in place or pull them out temporarily but come back to that place where you've got your legs in the air and then drop them down onto your left side. Again noticing are there any changes here like can I take the props away do I need more props do I need to roll a little further this side do I need to adjust my feet down here down there does that make it any easier again find that place of comfort find that place of stillness we're getting a very gentle stretch it doesn't need to be intense in fact it shouldn't be intense for this class 
we're using time rather than intensity to release that tension from our bodies. We're going to release ourselves from this pose, so moving any props, bringing the knees back to centre, and then sending them out long as we move into our final pose of this class, which is Shavasana, corpse pose. So again, maybe, uh, maybe you want to stick something under the head at this point. Maybe if you're feeling a bit cool, now's a great time to throw a blanket over the top. I love a good blanket of my feet for Shavasana. I tend to get a bit cold. We're just going to send the legs out long, send the arms out long. And from here, starting at the top of your head, just releasing any tension that you're still holding on the head, by your cheeks and your neck, your shoulders. Have a, have a wiggle around if you need. Your arms, allowing the fingers to do whatever they do. They don't need to be flat on the ground. It's probably that's often more natural to just have them curled a little bit. Releasing any tension from the chest and from the belly. Allowing the hips to sink down. The legs, allowing the feet to fall open if that feels comfortable. You can also bring the hands to your belly if you wish. Whatever works for you. And again, just finding some stillness here.
bring some movement back into the body by wiggling the toes, wiggling the fingers. Take that movement into your arms, into your legs. Maybe bring the arms over your head for a pencil stretch. And then bring yourself up using your hands into a seated position. Bring the hands together in front of the chest. Drop the chin. Namaste. Thank you for coming to practice with me today and I will see you in the next class.